Joining me here on Artemisy are two people who are involved in a very, very interesting film called Home Health Chronicles, Jason Henderson and Kimberly Frazier. Welcome to Artemisy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us on here. Absolutely. I'm excited to find out about this movie, which is very involved. There's a lot of plot twists and turns and all that stuff happening <laughs> with this film. First of all, I want you guys to tell the Artemis the audience about your involvement with Home Health Chronicles first, and then we'll get into the plot of it all. Awesome. Well, I'm Jason Henderson, physical therapist of 27 years. I'm a filmmaker from DC and uh, got into storytelling. I'm a storytelling, I'm an author, and I just wanted to get one of my books to become a film, and I failed at that. And then I tried it again, I failed again. And then during COVID, I wrote two screenplays, and one of them was the Home Health Chronicles, because uh, I was doing home health care, and I have a home health company. And when I wrote it, it started winning in film uh, festivals. And then I wanted to shoot it, so I wanted to partner with people to be able to make my film. And then I realized I was going to have to do this project um, with my own team. And so Issa Rae said, get your own team together, make your own project, and put it on out there. And I was forced to do so. <laughs> so it was it was fun doing. Wow. So all as a result of the pandemic, you kind of got busy you used your time wisely <laughs> yes ma'am uh yes and partnering and collaborating with people during COVID was great uh being able to partner with kim with uh her creation her creativity and music we were able to develop a soundtrack that goes with the film and i'm telling you it is on fire <laughs> indeed kimberly frazier tell us about your involvement with home health chronicles Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Home Health Chronicles is, uh, is just the wonderful story of how someone can be uh, misunderstood and also not understand the surroundings about them when they're just going about their day. And in particular, we have a physical therapist and he is living his life, doing the things that he should do, seeing his patients and all around him are things and dangers that are happening. And, and, and things that are pressing on him through his day. And, and it's just a, a, a look at his life. And so my involvement has been to uh, participate as a, as a voiceover actress. I participate as a, as a vocalist in um, some writing and some uh, uh, consulting on this project. So uh, I've known Jason Henderson for a long time and I've seen him work as a home health provider in the district over the past few years and it's it's a story that should be shared and, and more people should know not only that um, physical therapy is there but the service to the community in the District of Columbia it, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to, to build health and so um, the story being shared is just even more fun adding mm -hmm. that component. Now, Jason, you yourself, as you mentioned, are a physical therapist. Is this loosely based on your life, sort of a sensationalized <laughs> version of your life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, a great deal of it is experiences that I've gone through. Uh, one, I deal with health disparities uh, in D.C. I work with uh, people in, in the District of Columbia who uh, are falling into d diseases that could... Um, you know, be ratified if they took care of their health. So falling with heart disease and strokes and things like that. So I wanted to come bring a film that people could watch and just enjoy, right? And then there's some aspects that I had to deal with myself being um, an African-American physical therapist, and you still got to deal with the elements of being in urban environment. So I wanted to bring that uh, it was inspired by Friday, the movie. Mm -hmm. So if you ever seen what Ice Cube went through in LA, it's like the same. What is the day like for a physical therapist? And, you know, when you get a chance to see the film, it's, it, it, it's pretty funny. It has some great funny parts. It's more of a dramedy where it has drama and a bit of comedy. 
<laughs> Indeed. Just watching the trailer, I'm like, oh, wow. And I see the similarity to Friday. He's on a bike, you know, he's going from house to house. Yes. So funny. So this drama that he finds himself in is quite involved. Can you give us yes. a little bit more insight yes. into this drama? Yeah, so you know I had to make a DC story, right? So I went with the Smithsonian's, right? So I was like, what kind of crime could I, I, I put into a film, keep it entertaining, and I wanted to stay away from drugs. I wanted to stay away from stereotypical villains because I had to create a villain. So I wanted a villain that people could watch, kind of enjoy, and at the same time kind of find it funny. So there's a diamond theft in DC, the Smithsonian was robbed of the of the Hope Diamond, right? And this Hope Diamond is worth $400 million housed in uh, the Smithsonian. So these three uh, characters, I'm going to call them characters, they end up with the diamonds, but they end up in the therapist's hand because he went to go see the patient and he switched the bags and now he's running the city with these diamonds unknowingly. Mm. <laughs> so he has... He has um, bad guys chasing after him. Then he's also is um, uh, with the police. The police, they looked at him. They thought he was a drug dealer, which is one thing that happened to me in uniform. You know, I got stopped by the police one time in, in D.C. and they thought that I was a drug dealer. And I'm like, I'm in clothes and uniform. Wow. It was made for movie. <laughs> and then his boss is looking for him. So he has so many people looking for him. His girlfriend is looking for him. And I thought that that was made for movie. And so when you see him on the bike, he had to get on the bike because D.C. traffic. He had to get on the scooter because of D.C. traffic. He didn't want to get a ticket. And then he got on the Metro because he was like, my car, I ain't got nowhere to park. So we, we made fun, almost like planes, trains, and automobiles <laughs> in DC. I love that. Tell me about the making of the film. How long did it take to, you know, bring it forth? Yeah, well, we uh, I wrote it in 2020 and um, I put it in the film festivals and I, I won two. And when I won, I wanted to find somebody to collaborate. So I got rejected. I almost got rejected by, by uh, people who were like, hey, I don't know if I want to shoot this with you. So I got my team together. And so we did it in November. We started November 2021. Um, and then we closed out April 2022. We made it available in May 2022. So um, Five months. That's pretty quick. Yeah, it, it was it was a uh, we, we we started out to try to make it a short, but then all of the actors wanted to do more. They was like, let's do more. Let's do more. And we were able to extend it to a feature. And when we looked at each of the characters, we knew we needed a soundtrack to balance out the good acting. All of the dark villain characters were, were delivering strong acting. So I got with Kim and I said, Kim, we really need to come up with some lighter side music that would cover the dark side, you know, because you needed a balance. <clears throat> so we went to the studio singing, uh, encouraging and inspiring music. <laughs> Let's talk about the soundtrack. Let's get Kimberly in here and tell me about the making of the music and pairing it with the scenes in Home Health Chronicles. Yes, so the soundtrack is is a big fun part, I think, for me, for the movie, because we get to bring the voices out and kind of the things that are kept in our head, we kind of bring them out. So what we were hoping to do was show the positivity that the therapist is bringing to the neighborhood by sharing inspiring music over hip hop beats. And, you know, he's a guy who's young, youthful, doing his thing, making sure his community. And he goes he loves to sing him songs, but the way he sings them is a little bit different than maybe um, his grandmother might have sung them. So, you know, she sang them to her beat, he's singing them to his. And the same thing goes throughout the movie. So you hear the songs that are um, old songs, good old songs that you're familiar with, but they're done on a different beat so that you can carry them in a new bag now. Now you got you got them. And you can you can remember the words and bop a little bit and sing good songs. It, every every rap song doesn't have to have you know something 
that's that's derogatory, right? So right. we just tried, decided to, you know, go on that um, in the line of like maybe like self destruction. How that song was uh, in lifting up our community. We wanted to do that. So as we're highlighting DC, we wanted to highlight the spirituality here. There's a lot of churches here, and there's a lot of people who go to church here, and here's somewhere else they can sing. So incorporating that and threading that through the movie. Uh, just to make sure that his perspective is showing up against, like he said, the the darkness that's out there. He's carrying his own light, so it's like, hey, I got a light. I'm shining. I'm I, I'm gonna make sure that everywhere I go, I take it, and anywhere I am, I'm safe. And he sings those kinds of songs. I love that, and it gives it gives the film sort of a cross generational reach. You know, when you're incorporating the music that you know our grandmothers and grandfathers um, yes. enjoyed. And bringing it to the next generation. That's pretty cool. Let's talk a little bit about Monique Massey Jefferson's involvement. She's not here today, but we want to touch on how um, she contributed as well. That was an awesome story how she and I met. Uh, we were actually in production and was shooting. And in the middle of us shooting the film, she drives by, you know, and it's like, hey, I'm doing this comedy show. And I'm like, wow. And she invites us to a comedy show. By this time, I didn't have any music for the film. And I was like, hey, I want to put a soundtrack together. So we met and found out that she is a gospel recording artist. And she had three songs. And she's, and I said, well, look, if you let me use two songs on the, on, on the, um, on the soundtrack, I'll put you in the film. And that's how we, we connected. So she had two songs she had already recorded. And she had this one song called, I'm so grateful. And when I, the first time I listened to it, I was like, I was about to cry. I was like, yo, this, she went really hard at her experience. And it was just as uh, the female character reflects her and how she's so grateful for the moment. So grateful in the film for who she was with and what he was going through and being a supportive girlfriend. So she had she had a, an amazing song called "I'm Grateful," and that stimulated us to put together a combination song between the three of us. Wow! So are you singing as well in this? Yes, he is I, singing. I do sing. I do. Um, I <laughs> yes, I do sing as well. Uh, I sing in my church at College Park Church of Christ. I lead songs, so a lot of the songs that's in the hymns. We, we found matching hip hop songs. So as Kim mentioned, you take a song like uh, Anywhere is Home. The song says, earthly wealth and fame may never come to me, right? So in the, when we changed it to the hip hop sound, we changed it to be like, earthly wealth and fame may never come to me in a palace fair, and mine may never be. Hey. So I just changed the tempo, <laughs> right? And so I, I sing at a church. I'm not the best. I make a joyful noise. It's really Kim and Monique. They're the, well, they're the songbirds. Okay. <laughs> so, so we collaborated on a song called uh, Anywhere is Home. And I love that song. Uh, another one is Sing and Be Happy. We just sing and be happy. And uh, Jesus is coming soon. Just doing collaborations. I do them in church. And then when I found the hip hop beat, I just found the right rhythm. And Kim and Monique, they tore up the back. They they tore up the uh, the background and really harmonized well. It's 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 incredible to you know see that you're really incorporating all aspects of your talents. You're you seem to be multi talented. Thank and you. You found a way to incorporate your you know your writing, your singing, yes. Um, yes. the fact that you are yourself a physical therapist. That's quite. That's impressive, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, and, 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 it's, and being able to bring the blessing because God has blessed me with these opportunities and I'm just, I'm thankful. So in the film, I hope that it encouraged the DC residents that the films don't have to be DC and everything has to be negative. So we, we deal with appreciation in the film. Everything is the built value. So we, did, we built value in the neighborhood, value in the people, value in our patients, value in the community. 
And we wanted to lift DC as a character in the story. Now tell me how folks can get a chance to view the film, where we can hear the soundtrack, all that good stuff. Well, you can find you can find it on Vimeo.com and you can search Home Health Chronicles. Please follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram if you can. On Instagram is Home Health Chronicles. Uh, it's home underscore chron- health underscore chronicles. And then on Facebook is Home Health Chronicles, the movie. Please, DC residents, follow us on Facebook. You'll see the whole storyline, how we made the film, all the interviews. They're all on Facebook. And we would love for you to come out when we do our red carpet. So I'll let Kim tell you about how to find the uh, soundtrack. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, yes, the soundtrack is available on Apple uh, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music. It's on Facebook and on Instagram. You can use it to make your videos and things like that. And um, you can go to Kimberly.com and you can find us at Q Music. It's um, Q-M-B-E-R-L-I.com. And you go there, you can see all our social media. You can see the songs there. And you can go on YouTube and you can see the music there and play it and let us know what you're thinking. And if you yes. you want to um, do something with us, let us know because we're yes. working on Home Health Chronicles 2. Yep. So we got another soundtrack to do. Yep. Oh, so we're looking for artists who want to participate. We record right here in the DMV. And we yeah. are always looking to see how we can edify each other. So that's what our work is about. And uh, our music is in the air. Just ask for it. Amen. <laughs> we'll, yes. It'll come on your device. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, best of luck to you guys. Congratulations. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Jason Henderson, Kimberly Frazier. Thank you so much. Check out Home Health Chronicles. Yes. It is quite an interesting story from what I have seen from the trip. Awesome. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank yes. you. Thank you.